camera ready? <coughs> Do we have paper packets? Uh, we, we're going to get at least agendas. We're going to get the agenda. Right right I, I, think we can, I think we can start. Mm -hmm. and, um, we can at least get it. Here, oh, there's, no. there's one more in paper form. Oh, good, because you know what? It doesn't link across to the, Just to the website. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. Everyone, before the camera rolls, is having technical difficulties. Um, I'd like to call the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Agenda for the Montero Water and Sewer District. Sanitaries. Sanitaries, thank you. This is off to a real good start. Um, we are starting at 7 30, April 5, 2018. 7 30. Can we call to order, please? Mm -hmm. Call the order, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll call. However, uh, do, you want to do it. Uh, Director uh, uh, Slater Carter. Present. Director Boyd. Here. Director Wilson. Here. Director Harvey. Here. Director Huber. Here. Thank you very much. So, I want to welcome everyone tonight. We have a very full agenda. And I always like to pick on Catherine. What's your current water status right now? Uh, we are at half of normal, half of average. But well, we got <coughs> two more inches coming, but that. Well, oh, we got two rainstorms coming, one this weekend and one on Tuesday or Wednesday. So hopefully yeah. we'll keep everything green. But it won't get us up to the Well, yeah, yeah, we've given up on that. But Fortunately, we have a good water system. Yes, With great vanity. Okay. Okay, so um, moving along, oral comments that are not with the <laughs> Oral comments are not on the agenda, and I have is it Clyde Bradshaw. Thank you very much. On the wellness program, come on. <clears throat> Hello. I actually have two things to speak about. I'm going to start with the first one. That's going to be a little easier for me. The wellness program. Um, I just actually meant to come last month, which would have been six months from you guys put it into place. Um, I'll give you a little update about my progress. Uh, I've lost roughly 35 pounds. Um, my physical, mental um, well-being has definitely been affected by my uh, uh, changing of lifestyle, um, going to the gym, yoga, swimming, Muay Thai. I just want to thank you guys for putting the wellness program into place. Um, I'm not sure I meant to ask my coworkers who else was using it, but it's been a rather fast time for me for the past couple of weeks and didn't get that done, but I'm pretty sure a few other members are using it as well. And I definitely implore the board and encourage you to review it come September when you plan on voting for it again and hopefully continue it. And I don't know, maybe increase it if you would like, but I understand if that's not in the books. Um, easy part of my speech is done right there. The hard part, um, let me take a breath. Uh, as of Monday, I put in my letter of uh, recommend, uh, resignation accepted a position um, for the Presidio Trust. This was a very hard decision for me to make. The board, general, uh, general manager, superintendent, the rest of my work, uh, co-workers have been very supportive. This has been a very big step for me in my life. Um, I didn't think it would be this hard. <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for uh, letting me go from one spot in my life to another. And I will always think of this time in Ontario is a very special time for me. Um, God, it's a lot harder than I thought it'd be. I'm gonna make a joke so I can laugh. Take a deep breath. Um, I came here thought I knew knew a lot more than I did, and got taught ten times more than I ever knew. Um, sometimes the hard way, sometimes the easy way, sometimes the fun way. But. Uh, Watching how the board works, watching how Clemens works, watching how the team I'm a part of in operation works has been a great experience. Um, just to let you know, I'm moving on to the Presidio Trust, a job I wouldn't have been confident to go for or qualify for without the experience that I've had here at Montero. Um, I know you guys will live without me and do really well without me. Um, you guys, uh, we have another member that's been a part-time member with us that's trained and ready to take my place. Um, and I think he'll do really well, and I, I recommend him. Clemens will speak about that later with you guys. Um, but I just, it's hard to leave such a good place. It's hard to 
see an opportunity in front of you and not pass it up either. So with a lot of thought and a lot of heart, I made the leap of faith. I don't know if I made the right decision, but I'm gonna do it. And uh, I just wanna thank everybody and uh, just let you know how great you guys are. That's about as much as I can get out. Uh, thank you so much. I, I'd like to say like, thank you. Um, thank you for working for us. Thank you for growing with us. And um, we, I wish you, and I'm sure we all wish you, the best in, in what's coming. And stop that. I did, I'm not moving anywhere. Um, this job's provided me the ability to live in the Bay Area and continue on to another job that allows me to live in the Bay Area, which is hard. <laughs> And uh, it's it's uh, it's a weird situation. Well, congratulations. Yeah, I've never felt like I I was leaving before I thought I would a lot sooner than I thought I would. So uh, my plan was definitely to stick around here a lot longer, but I just uh, like I said, the opportunity came, and it had nothing to do with how well I was treated here and the job I was beyond Siri if I was to be honest with you the on-call part is very difficult um, but at the same time it's a very special thing to work for this district and uh, I wish it could have lasted longer um, but you don't get everything you want in life. Keep following the wellness program. And if, we're not, if, if we're not providing it, just keep doing it. Part of the community, I plan on being here in September and saying hi. And, um, my overall goal is to be under 200 pounds by uh, August. And if I keep my current pace, I'll be there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We can't miss Thank you. how hard this must have been. But good luck to you. And, and we're also very happy that you're able to take advantage of this opportunity. So it was nice while you were here, and we're glad that uh, you're able to do what you're going to be doing. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. I, I have here a public hearing on the agenda. I, is that misplaced? I, I don't think that makes sense. So I'm going to ignore that part and go on to the consent agenda. Um, and on the consent agenda, we have approved minutes for the March 8, 2018 meeting. Approve the financial statements for the February 2018. Approve the warrants for February 1, 2018. The SAM flow report for February 2018. The month review of the current investment portfolio. Connection permit applications received. The monthly water production report for February 2018. The rain report, the solar energy report, and the monthly public agency retirement service report for January 2018. Is there anyone on the board who wish to remove any items on the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a, a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, I have been requested to um, change the agenda a bit and start with new business item number one and number two and with the old business to follow item number two of the new business. Is there any objections from the board for that change? Silence is everything. I will assume we're all fine. And so we'll start off with a review of the sewer authority mid-coast general collection budget. Clemens, I'll start with you. Yeah, thank you, Dwight. So um, the SAM board met on March 26, 2018 and approved uh, two budgets to be sent out to the member agencies. Uh, one is the collections budget. That is suggested to increase by $129,000 or 16% over the prior fiscal year. Uh, our 1718 assessment for MWSD for the collections contract services would increase by uh, $48,000 or 17%. The other budget is the general budget that contains an infrastructure division budget. We, ha we had this already in the past year. So we already saw that five-year capital improvement program. Um, Sam is now asking for an assessment increase of the general budget by $913,000. That is $18,000. Uh, excuse me, 18% to a total of um, $6 million and some. Uh, 
in our assessment, Montero's assessment would increase by 136%. That's 12%. 136,000 or 12%, and that's a total of 1.249. Um, one of the reasons why I asked for the rate study to be heard after the first two items is simply because the first two items really explain a lot about why we're actually having to do the rate increase. Um, now, this is uh, this presentation of the, this first presentation of the SAM budget has been historically done by the SAM manager. We have Beverly Marshall with us. Um, so this time, our staff recommendation is simply to hear um, what Beverly is presenting, uh, give an opportunity to ask the board questions, the public questions, and we really plan to bring this for further discussion and consideration at our May 3rd meeting. So, um, I'm suggesting to give Beverly the word and uh, present the two budgets, and uh, yeah, okay. that's that's really my recommendation. Right if now. it's okay with the board, Beverly, I will. You are next. Well, thank you very much for letting me come and present to you. Uh, this budget has been discussed numerous times um, with the finance committee for Sam, and you have representatives on the finance committee, uh, Director Boyd. And we've talked a lot about content, projects, layout of the budget, presentation of the budget. Um, we started back in November, uh, actually started in October talking about this strategic plan and if we wanted to make any changes to it. And then of course going forward from there, uh, talking about what that means for our budget. As you know, we've had some unexpected expenses this year and because of that um, that caused a pretty significant increase in the mid-year budget which we normally don't have but it also it was an opportunity for us to look at what we've been doing as far as preventive maintenance that's certainly something we had been looking at for some time but um, between doing and completing the five-year infrastructure plan and then the emergency work that's happened over the past year to 18 months, it's really given us an opportunity to reevaluate how we do our preventive maintenance, what we're doing, what we need to be doing. And so you do see the impact of that in this year's uh, proposed budget, primarily because we, we need to get ahead of our preventive maintenance. Uh, it's something that has not gotten the attention that it, it should have over the years. Some of that has to do with uh, insufficient staffing. Some of that has to do with not having enough resources to have contractors come in and do the work, especially for the specialized work. And we want to rectify that this year. And so the budget you have in front of you reflects that. It reflects additional positions in the treatment, primarily the operator that we added this year, and then another maintenance worker. We're looking at a utility worker to start with, which would be a an entry level position. Uh, that would be another set of hands. They wouldn't necessarily have to come with the type of certification that we would be looking for in a maintenance technician. But it's someone that we hope that will grow into that, uh, especially knowing the tenure of some of our employees that we certainly want to be planning for their succession. That, of course, takes up a significant amount of the increase that we're asking for. We're also asking for additional resources as you're aware, the electrical bus duct um, incident this year pointed to some opportunities for us to have a consultant or a contractor come in and perform regular maintenance on that equipment. Uh, for clarification, <coughs> that's, that's not really something we would have been able to do um, in the distant past. <coughs> it's only with the <coughs> Walker tank and the wet weather project where we can actually hold the flow that we're able to take the system completely offline and have the electrical inspected. So we plan on doing that starting with this next year. Um, so even though we're replacing the bus duct, there's still more electrical that needs to be inspected and having regular maintenance on it. And there's uh, additional funds in this year's budget that had not been there before specifically to do that work. So as uh, Clemens mentioned, it's a 14% overall increase in expenditures. Um, the primary reason for that are the, the new positions I spoke of. 
um, the additional CIP projects which came out of the five-year infrastructure plan and um, the additional maintenance work that needs to be done so that we are giving proper preventive maintenance and to some degree because this preventive maintenance hasn't been done for some time um, identifying issues and potential um, failures prior to them happening as opposed to them catching us by surprise the assessment however the request is an 18 percent increase which is more than the expenditures but that's because we're asking to start building back up our operational reserve that we pulled down from in order to do the Valamar section uh, two years ago when I first got here. Uh, and we have not built that back up. So that is the, the JPA budget portion. For the collection system, as you're aware, the city went through an RFP process and uh, included in that um, a, a what if scenario for the Granada and Montero systems. I used the same costing methodology for all of them, which is not to say um, what's been alleged is that I made it cheap for Half Moon Bay and dumped the rest of it on Granada and Montero, and, and that's not what I did. I looked at the true cost of services for the work that we do under the collection systems based on the high level quality assurance and quality control we would like to provide and have always wanted to provide. And in order to do that, um, the true cost is reflected. We provided that information to the city. Um, I have worked with the city and uh, understand that they are going to be contracting with Sam for the majority of those services and it will be a three-year contract. Not having had that discussion with the other two agencies, I just assumed status quo on the service level uh, and used the same cost methodology. And so there's no subsidies from any of the member agencies or participating agencies to the other and there's no subsidy from SAM. So it's, it's a standalone true cost of services for the collection system. And um, the only thing that is not included is a operating reserve or cash flow for the collection system contract itself. There, there hasn't ever been, uh, which is why we bill on a monthly basis. But I, I do know that there has been some discussions with the management team about the best way to do that. I know the city of Half Moon Bay has been talking about like proactively paying a quarter of it in advance. And there's various iterations, but I didn't make any assumptions on that with the Montera and Granada um, purport, the portions of that contract services. I just assumed it would still remain a monthly payment. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm gonna recommend the following process. If Catherine and Scott, who are on the uh, SAM board, could perhaps respond with comments, and then the three of us after that could Q&A. So I'll let you both uh, uh, either Q&A or additional comments on this, please. Well, I do have a question, <coughs> and that is Half Moon Bay at the last meeting sent a, 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 a letter with several SAM wills mm -hmm. in it. Um, is SAM willing to meet these conditions where does that leave the budget could you uh, elaborate what those uh, i would be happy to try and find it um it's it's a long letter <coughs> it was an email that i received from john dotty the public works right superintendent um on the about five o'clock or six o'clock on the day of our meeting the first was that they would support the budget if the following were to occur the infrastructure budget would include 1.715 million for projects, and those are the projects that were already identified in the budget, so clearly those were things that we were willing to do. Um, they wanted some more detail about engineering and consulting services and how those break out, right. so that, that just sounds like an information request. They want the segment four of the IPS line and Portola pump number two to be reevaluated and uh, if considered not until fiscal year 1920. Uh, okay, 2020, yeah, 19 and 20. 2019 and 2020. Uh, capital project sheets, they, they want more of the risk factors included in that, which um, I had told them that we were in the process of doing a 20 year CIP, so clearly that, that information will be included in that 20 year CIP. 
The city remains committed to proactively funding critical repair and replacement projects such as the flare and, and purchasing uh, a trailered emergency pump and hose. So they were just telling us if we wanted to include that in the budget, they would be supportive of that. And they want to make sure that we begin our discussions on the infrastructure portion of the budget um, earlier than this year. Although this year I started trying to have the conversations in November and was having difficulty getting uh, responses from some of the managers. Uh, I, I will say Clemens was not one of those managers. He and I did talk. <laughs> and um, they want to start in November, which is what we did this year. So of course, we're more than happy to do that again for next year. And as I said, we're in the process of doing a 20-year CIP, uh, which will be on the SAM agenda for Monday night. And that'll be just the, the draft in the first part of the process. And I assume there'll be lots of discussions with the member managers. Uh, and that will roll into the 2019-20 uh, fiscal year budget. Um, they recognize the that there is a need to increase the budget. However, they didn't like the significant increase this year, and they are asking that Sam make a better effort to hold the increases closer to what the CPI increase year over year would be, um, which isn't necessarily <laughs> practical considering the fact that Sam's budget for preventive maintenance and infrastructure has been underfunded for many years and um, and there's been some discussion and debate about that and who's responsible for paying what and so this year I think we're seeing the sort of the right sizing of some of that um, and well, some of it's just on, on that point there was general agreement including the Pathway that uh, there had not been sufficient funding mm -hmm. for certain activities so this is kind of a true up year yes um, and I think we all want to see rates stabilize around the CPI. That's great, but when you haven't been paying enough and things go bad and you got to fix it, you know, there's going to be that big spike. So yeah, unfortunately, my, this was the spike year. So my question is, is the request for the CPI based on going forward, or are they trying to go back prior to the bump this year? Do we know? Uh, they, think, they're I looking think, at the forward, going yeah, forward. I, they, they wanted to plant the flag on that, but they know I mean, they, they were generally very supportive of mm -hmm. where we are. Yeah. I think this is a, a very soft um, formulation, so I think the city would like to see this going forward. Mm -hmm. But it didn't read to me like this was uh, a firm condition. Right? Not a deal breaker. No, in fact, they, the manner in which they presented it was, was uh, less than we've seen in past years. Yeah, it didn't come across it, as an either was, or. Uh, honestly, it, there was a lot of good stuff in the letter, right. and we had a good discussion around it, and mm -hmm. we all generally agreed, yeah, these are all fine things. Yes. I, I would think the one big um, planning a stake, either or, uh, has to do with reserve policies. The, the city rep, uh, representatives, meaning the staff representatives, um, have been very strong in saying they don't believe Sam should uh, repay that reserve, nor should it maintain a reserve, and that the reserve should be maintained by the member agencies. So that's probably the biggest point of contention is the request for that $250,000 to start rebuilding <coughs> the, the two-month reserves. I, I don't know how strongly they're going to stand on that one, but I would say of all the discussion that we had, that was probably the one they had the strongest reaction to. We, we had a we had a good discussion around um, the the difference between uh, reserves for repairs and reserves for operations, and there was no disagreement that we needed a minimum two months, more likely three months of operational reserve, just because of the way things line up on on month boundaries for income expenses and you know bills come in, you know whatever your net terms are, those things don't really respect anything about, about you know, the, the cycles in your, in your bank account. So having an operational reserve is actually, by and large, just a buffer for evening that stuff out. So that we had a, a, a good uh, collaborative discussion about what to, what to do about holding, holding reserves for emergency repairs. I think, I think they've successfully opened that topic for discussion. We'll see where that goes. Um, the other items were that um, they wanted greater detail, especially on the professional services. 
Um, that continues to be a, a discussion point. Um, I truly believe it, it's a trust factor that uh, we're, we're using only those things that are necessary. I can assure you there's, there's really not a lot of fluff in the SAM budget, especially when you look at the uh, maintenance work that we've had to do this year, reactionary maintenance work, and how it would have been much better to have spent <coughs> preventive maintenance work to have avoided those circumstances in the past. Um, but we continue to have those discussions. Um, there's still a debate on the uh, legal services and what they can and can't be used for and how much they should be set at. And um, they so are- So on the legal services, just a question for yes. you too and perhaps yourself as well. I know Bethlehem Bay's been holding out and paying their portion of the legal services, if I understand this correctly. Has that been rectified in your discussions? So is that still an outstanding issue as far as the group is concerned? Well, I, I will say that uh, last night, it w or night before last, it was on the agenda, and I, I don't know the outcome. Nobody has told me. But they were voting to, at least for this year's budget, um, pay $21,000 in additional funds to take care of this year's um, legal issues with everything except for the lawsuit. There still has not been a resolution to funding SAM with regards to uh, the attorney or myself uh, being present during those discussions. To my knowledge, that hasn't been resolved yet. And um, I don't want to go too far off down this line, but in your role, isn't that discretionary on your part as far as whether you attend or not? Um, I'm not invited. You're not invited to what? The meetings. Which meetings? The, the meeting, the, the discussions on the, the uh, lawsuit. Is that because it's a closed session? It's because no. it's attorneys and they have not invited either Sam nor Beverly or okay. informed her. I'm just trying to figure out the context yeah. of the meeting. I, I, I would be happy to have that discussion, but I don't know why. Okay. I'm just, I just want to get the contents. Yep. It. So if, that still continues to be a discussion on the uh, legal costs is uh, just exactly how involved does Sam need to be? Um, when does Sam's lawyer need to be involved? And I know there have been many discussions going back and forth uh, about this uh, with all the legal teams. And it, uh, to my knowledge, has not been resolved yet. Yeah, um, while we're at the legal services, um, I, I actually have a, a, a number of questions. Mm -hmm. um, so the 1718 budget um, was looking at an ex expenditures of $46,000 roughly. Uh, we recently approved now a budget amendment um, and the current estimate for the fiscal year 1718 is $98,000, so roughly double of that. The budget amendment was significantly more. Um, can you talk about the difference between what was approved and what's now actually spent? The, um, the city and Granada did not approve the additional funding for the legal services for uh, during the mid-year budget. I understand that Montero did. Granada based it on what everybody else does, and uh, Half Moon Bay did not approve it, well, unless they did last night, or Tuesday night. Well, we, we, we did get confirmation from Chuck Duffy several times that Granada did approve the legal funds. Um, but regardless, um, so Montero and Granada approved additional funds, right? Uh, how are they? How does this work together with these numbers? The SAM budget uh, that was the mid-year budget uh, amendment that was approved by the SAM board did not include the additional legal costs. We were waiting until we understood what the city was doing and got clarification from Granada, and then we were going to bring it back. So I'm still waiting to find out what happened at the city council meeting. Okay. Now we have uh, received an. An email from uh, Carl Nelson, the attorney for Sam, that states that his uh, billing to Sam uh, must undergo review by the Hapman Bay City Attorney. Yes. And that hasn't occurred yet, currently. No. So I, I'm a little I'm confused. Um, the last time I checked this, the governing group was of the three entities. So why is the city of Hapman Bay? making that determination for the group? Well, I don't know. 
Uh, we have, I don't have any rationale. Well, I'm, I just I'm confused because well, the governing group of the of the of I, have, I have no statement. Half, Half Moon Bay, um, even though Montero and Granada are willing to pay, has decided to withhold payment on these items, and um, it would certainly lead to. Um, an interesting discussion to review the JPA and see what's the, but see the problem is our budget last year was never adopted officially. It was put in place and it was the budget that had been adopted the year before because Half Moon Bay refused to adopt the budget. So we're in a somewhat strained situation. Um, yeah, I understand that. The question is, now we're looking at a budget for the upcoming year, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So my question is, in the legal section, what are we approving again in so many words? It's everything except for what might be spent uh, defending Sam in the lawsuit. So it's normal just participation uh, at the board meetings, reviewing contracts, uh, special requests, but it, there's nothing in the budget for next year to deal with the lawsuit because basically the city said if there was money in there for that, there would be a problem with them accepting the budget. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's an important point of distinction to be made between. Well, I mean, we could talk about whether someone who is suing the others has has a proper place in preventing Sam, whose name is a party in real interest. Uh, from having representation. Um, Happy Bay is saying anything that would involve Sam being involved in defense against the lawsuit, they're not going to pay for it. I mean, we certainly understand why they feel that way, but there's a, a, a distinction between that and Sam having representation. And as we know, for example, if we put out, if we put out, uh, a request for bids and we get something in and we let the contract and we do that without having an attorney read over it, we're stupid. And we're going to be very likely facing some kind of difficulty that our attorney could have helped us through the application of their expertise and good counsel, helped us have a contract that would be something we can all rest assured in its in its uh, completeness and correctness. For the, for the audience that doesn't normally deal with having an attorney just in the normal course of business, Sam in, in the interactions surrounding the lawsuit, things like production of, of records for information requests as part of the lawsuit, we're down to like having these niggling discussions around, okay, our attorney at Sam needs to be there to help go through the records to make sure that what we're producing is, is the right stuff and, and somehow doesn't create jeopardy with our regulators or our, our constituents or business owners or whatever because they produce the wrong records. We always have an attorney go through that stuff and make sure that we're doing that well. And because of Half Moon Bay's insistence, the ability for Carl, our attorney there, to, to be involved in all the adequate, just normal business things around that lawsuit has gotten very difficult where individual billing items are being reviewed and that has gotten complicated but I'll, I'll think this I'll say that this is a, a good thing Half Moon Bay's attorney in trying to review those things realize there's a potential conflict in demanding to review the billing of an attorney for an opponent in the litigation because it could reveal things that shouldn't be revealed between the attorneys so Half Moon Bay's attorney turned to Sam's attorney and said, could you look through this bill and tell us if there's anything that is outside the scope of what half of base wanted to pay for? So it's just been this really delicate, unnecessarily complex dance because one party's not willing to trust that the other party is gonna just stick to the administrative kind of council stuff. And they're worried that somehow Sam's gonna get in there and like start fighting. And it's like, None of us are directing Sam to fight. Two of our agencies are, are very interested in Sam's attorney being a good attorney, providing good counsel. Um, and 
Okay. We're just kind of working our way through it. And I think we're getting there, but it's uh, a lot of work. Jim and Bill, just let me let, let me have Jim and Bill come yeah. over here and then come back. Jim and Bill, Jim and Bill. Yeah, it, uh, first of all, I do apologize that normally I would look, have looked at this much more closely. But in general, the when I look at this, there's no not sufficient detail to figure out if an expenditure makes any sense or not. Uh, using just one of them, uh, professional and technical services that uh, eight hundred and two thousand dollars. You know, uh, eighty percent of a million dollars. It's just it's a figure, and and I can't find that it ties back to anything. And that, uh, and I looked at even like the utilities. You know, it's a half a million dollars worth of utilities, and I see uh, no detail that would indicate. Uh, 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 why that where that figure came from and by inference I'm sort of assuming that uh, uh, there's you know a, a sufficient lack of detail for for most of these line items and so uh, I don't know how you can ever uh, approve a, uh, a budget unless there's much more detail to it well there actually is in section 2 um, there is more detail uh, this was okay, so, so let's just take the, the uh, professional and technical services. Uh, how does that uh, uh, detail back so that uh, uh, both historically what was uh, spent uh, and what will be, that will be spent for in the future? Well, if you go back to the second segment, each of the depart or divisions within SAM it provides you that information because clearly what professional services would be in the administration department would be different than what's in the treatment department. But, but that really, information... Those are the line items with the um, um, chart of accounts that maybe didn't get put in our staff report. Uh, perhaps. I did not include them in the, the budget attachment. Well, that's why then. Yeah. But the, the budget itself, those items are in there. And then when you go into the narrative portion, because I was trying to keep it into, for the people who like numbers, they're up front. For the people who want to drill down into the detail, they're in another segment, because that was part of the, the difficulty in putting the SAM budget together, is different um, individuals want different data. So, so to try there, and... Is there, I mean, so the, I think the question is, is there a, a since we're not approving anything tonight, mm -hmm. I think maybe the question in so many words is could we have a drill down or can we have that backup documentation? It, it is in there. In what we have or what mm -hmm. you have? It what, should be in there. What page is that? That should be uh, section two. It should, it should be uh, Roman numeral 2-1. Yeah, right in there. You, you should get the types of, uh, so if you go to professional services, it explains what's in there. So for example, in the what we call environmental compliance or the lab department, um, professional services include outside laboratories and consultants. We contract with Silicon Valley Clean Water, uh, various laboratories, independent laboratories, um, the RCD, and event registration. So those, that's what's in that particular one. If you go into the treatment section, it'll tell you what is included in the treatment. So that one would be oh. page Okay, so going back 13. to... Well, it says, it says here under professional services, specialized services that cannot be provided by staff, mm -hmm. $200,000. Is that what you're referring to? Well, on page 2-13, which is the treatment section, uh, services that are specialized, so it says GIS software hosting, electrical maintenance, safety training, permit compliance assistance, the SSMP audit and updates, the outfall inspection, various other inspections that are required, and SCADA support. Those are primarily the um, vendors' uh, services that we have under that. So for example, we're co currently using CalCon for preventive maintenance. We plan on, during the fiscal year 18-19, going out with an RFP um, to get uh, proposals from various service providers. So I couldn't tell you exactly who it's going to be, 
currently we contract with CalCon for those services. Um, it may be CalCon, it may be someone else. Uh, we currently use Peninsula Pump um, oh. for preventive maintenance. Same thing, we plan on going out with an RFP to get those preventive maintenance services. Right now it's uh, Peninsula Pump, but of course if we go out with an RFP, I, I can't say that it'll definitely be Peninsula Pump next year. Okay, so that's page uh, uh, section 2-13, mm -hmm. okay, uh, it says uh, professional services for 2017-18 uh, and then 2018-19. So we're, we're preparing a budget for 2018-19, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says 432,500, mm -hmm. okay, where's the other... Uh, 400,000. Well, in administration, you have uh, approximately. Okay, sorry. okay, now, now, now how would anybody know that? You know, try looking at this and trying to to uh, uh, say, okay, you got $800,000, uh, and how are you spending that? And uh, okay, so you go back to uh, uh, budget line item number 10 on page. Uh, uh, Section 2 uh, 13, okay, that it says uh, uh, services that are specialized and need to be performed by contractors other than staff. But there's no dollar amounts to any of this stuff, it's just sort of a uh, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, how much does GIS software hosting cost? What is electrical maintenance, uh, safety training? permit compliance, those all should have numbers associated with them, shouldn't they? They do have numbers associated with them, but the budget would be considerably larger if I were to put that level of detail in there, and that's one of the complaints I've received, is that there's but, but, but too, how, too how, much detail because it's too many pages. But, but how can, as a director, we uh, do our due diligence in saying that uh, we approve this budget, that the money's been properly spent, without that detail? Well, I, I think that the SAM board and the two representatives from Monterra that sit on the SAM board would be the ones who would go into that level of detail so my, with my SAM. I, I think the question is, independent of the SAM membership, I, I am absolutely convinced we're doing due diligence, but I think Bill's asking, is that information that can be given to us? You know, let me speak for Beverly. I did ask as part of the budget this year to have the general ledger codes rectified with the spending items. They didn't get transferred over here, but I'm sure Beverly could send them my, my point. If we over. Could, if we could. She's already done the work. It goes from 1617 through the 1819 um, uh, proposed. Yeah. And you can you can go through all of the general ledger code. My, my point is, I think we're saying the same thing. I think this group likes to have that detail. You may have other folks that are sort of you know irritated by that. But if, to your point, Catherine, if we could have that information sent over, I think we would we would feel better about this budget than these larger numbers that is having a little difficulty to try to trying to track down the specifics. Right. The, the SAM board did have access to this, unfortunately, and and frankly, it's I believe it's on our website now under the uh, uh, March 12th okay. agenda item. But you could just zip it over. Oh. Everybody can get it. I would I would recommend the latter if we could. But that, does that I mean we're not improving anything tonight? So. No, but but I, I do yeah I do think that that's important, but also. That just taking that uh, one expenditure, eight hundred thousand, that it says you know number ten professional services, four hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred. Um, how would anybody be able to figure out where the other four hundred thousand dollars is coming from? Because in the roll-up budget, it says it's a roll-up of administrative services, treatment services, environmental compliance, and infrastructure. So. The roll-up is everything rolled up together, and then each one of those is a subset of that total budget. So you can go to each one of those spreadsheets, and it gives you the breakdown for each one of those divisions so that you can see, and it's not just all in one lump, but for, the, for those who want to just see the total, the total is also available. I'm gonna reinforce Catherine's um, statement, which is if we can get the 
I mean, I mean we're kind of going around in circles right now. I and mean, we're going to assume that due diligence is being done. The challenge is, is we just don't have the background material. So I would recommend that we have the information sent over to us per what you've already given yeah. to the center. I think that's a pretty easy task. And, and if we could have that, that would help us immensely. Um, uh, so this, but when this was sent over, Peter, did you have a chance to look at this at all? No. Okay. And I need to remind the board, remember, if we're not approving anything tonight, so we want to make sure the questions and answers and the information we have is, uh, it looks like it's available, it's just a matter of getting it over here, so. Jim, do you have any comments? Yeah, no, no comments, no questions. Catherine? Okay. Any more, Scott and Catherine? No. No, no I, I, we've gone over this pretty carefully. I know um, Beverly has worked closely with the managers on this for quite a while. And um, you, um, I think to, to be um, real honest, I hope we can, it, it will depend on what Half Moon Bay does with this, and we need to know about that maybe ahead of May 3rd. Um, and <coughs> maybe we need to, we'll need to have a, a special meeting or not cancel the second meeting in April so that we can um, respond as needed um, to whatever half the day chooses to do. It's kind of a touchy situation. Um, I am very thankful that we're not going through the kind of um, chaos that we did with the budgets last year, and I'm hoping this will, this will go through um, without that kind of chaos, but there's, given the lawsuit and um, some of the things I have heard expressed, there's no guarantees on that. Okay, and Clemens, any final comment? No. no comments. I, I guess my last comment is, oh, I'm sorry, um, but the reason the budget has had to go up so much this year for Sam was a it had no reserves for emergencies and um, I remember when that was was discussed and it I was I would, this board was concerned about it at the time um, so we do need to start building those reserves the other problem is um, because there has been this revolving door of managers, there has been 12 managers in 20 years at Sam. So just as somebody's getting settled into the job, they decide for whatever reason to leave, and so there's been this um, continuing uh, practice of pushing projects and maintenance and documentation and so on to the side. And Beverly has walked into a um, situation where what would be normal in, in any business or any institution, much like what Clemens has built here, and what, and what we had built for him to move into when he became general manager, is not there. And so it's hard to make um, promises about the future when you don't know what's going to break next, and you don't know what's going to break next because you don't know, I mean, you know all this stuff is there, but um, it hasn't had maintenance and repair like it needs to. So it's it's a tough situation. And, um, I hope we can get on with lower budget increases next year and the year after. Okay. Any further comment from the board? Beverly, thank you so much. I'd like to thank Beverly and the rest of the folks at Sam for helping us get this draft distributed to the member agencies uh, here first week in April. Gives us, gives us, I believe, ample time to deal with this, get our any questions answered, consume it properly, and get it approved in plenty of time. To, as opposed to the previous years where we've been really rushed down at the last minute trying to get it done. And again, I'm, I'm hoping we'll get the material that's been requested tonight in, in the depth that I think is available. So that we'll be able, I'm hoping you'll be able to go through it and we can all have another discussion on those very issues.
Yeah, the other thing is the Interpet pipeline, the big expense from last year, was repaired and finished two months early. Uh, a month early. Month early. Month early. Well, a month be, early. We had a drought for two months. We were lucky in the weather. We were very lucky in the weather, and it was it was a good crew and uh, good management. Although I think there was one person on the board who was a little bit concerned about how the pipes were being driven up and down Highway 1. <laughs> we, uh, I guess <coughs> Sam's staff got all over that. I'm uh, not suggesting that. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased Sam's staff got on top of that yeah. and uh, the, the project went forward without event. And uh, even though, yes, you're right, the, the good weather had a lot to do with the ability to finish off early, but it's not always possible that a contractor can allocate their staffing resources to specifically anticipate that, they were able to uh, rally their forces and get that thing done in, in a very good time. I just out of curiosity, are they going to do any planning in that area? That's the only thing left. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you again very much. Appreciate it. And so we'll go to the item number two of the new business, which is review and possible action concerning authorization of award the contract for the Cabrillo Highway Super Improvement Projects 1A. Yeah, thanks Dwight. Um, this is a very uh, exciting topic for us. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, we have been waiting for this project for uh, four years, five years. Um, working, uh, Pippin has been working on, on getting Caltrans to issue the permit um, over the years and um, we succeeded last year finally got this project together, under, uh, <coughs> went out to bid. Um, the lowest apparent bidder uh, at this time is, is, or is JMB Construction of South San Francisco, and the uh, low bid is, lowest bid here is $1.261 million. Um, I'd like to actually hand the word over to Pippin because I know he has um, more to say about this project. My recommendation is to adopt the resolution approving the agreement and enter into the contract for construction of the Cabrillo Highway Sewer Improvements Phase 1A project. Pippin. Thank you, Clemens. And, uh the board tonight. Thank you for uh, having me here to discuss this uh, long-awaited project for the district. Um, uh, we've actually uh, um, first became aware of um, stress in the Cabrillo Highway system uh, the year that Clemens was hired here. Um, George Irving finished a um, uh, televising project just prior to that. And uh, <clears throat> we have a unique situation here in the district with um, an extensive pipeline under the uh, a Caltrans right-of-way in a longitudinal fashion, under the main lane or under the what we call the fog line or the white stripe, basically the bike, bike path area, um, for several thousand feet. And uh, the, the pipeline predates the highway being a Caltrans uh, right-of-way, actually. And um, there are, uh, it's a clay pipeline, there are some longitudinal uh, longitudinal stress cracks which have the potential to um, for the pipe to collapse and cause um, catastrophic blockage. Um, in addition, Caltrans did some repaving um, a few years back and uh, covered a manhole here right across the street at 16th which was in the traveled way and failed to raise it so the SAM staff couldn't clean the pipeline adequately. And in the interim, when we were trying to get that raised, roots got in the system and actually <coughs> caused an SSO into the creek. Um, so there's been a, a lot of issues with this. This uh, it's it's the main pipe that carries all the water from Montera, uh, you know, the whole Montera air basin here to the um, uh, Sam's Montera pump station. Um, one of the problems we have with the pipe is it's it's fairly shallow. It was built when it was a country lane. The road was regraded uh, to give better curvature for higher speed travel, which actually made the pipe more vulnerable because it shallowed it up in a couple locations. So um, there's a, a number of, of issues in the long term. Being that it's such a long pipeline, uh, it's taken several years for the district to build a reserve, uh, save the money to do the project, and we've been planning on uh, a multi-year project to um, 
uh, to replace that. One of the things we need to do, uh, the biggest point of this project is getting started. And I mean that from a construction standpoint, although it turned out it was actually the permitting, which is the slowest part, getting Caltrans to approve that longitudinal right-of-way, uh, which is not um, allowed in their current standards. So they have to make a variance. So they had to go to Sacramento for lots of discussion. But in addition to the permit, actually getting started on the pipeline is really uh, a, a challenge because we need to deepen the pipe. And in order to deepen the pipe, we have to start at the beginning, which is here on the property, and lower it underneath the small hill we have where our driveway is, lower it um, several feet under 16th Street, and extend a little further off to the shoulder so we can then lower it all the way up as we need to to improve both the depth for safety um, from future construction by Caltrans and to improve its, uh, improve its uh, capacity. Uh, we also got an, uh, an exception from the coastal permit, um, which does not allow parallel pipes uh, for growth and redundancy, or for growth purposes, but we did get it approved for redundancy. So we will be able to maintain our old crossing. We can CIPP line it, for example, and preserve it, and keep it um, connected for emergency use only. So that was a, another big thing. So I was really, it's so difficult to add a crossing under a highway, I really didn't want to lose, lose that utility. So. Um, that will, rehabilitating the old crossing can be something we can do in the future uh, as part of the future phases. Uh, JMB construction, we had three bids. JMB construction was the low bid. Um, all the contractors are, uh, were qualified. We had one local um, bid of Stolaski and Gonzales, just for general knowledge. And we also had um, uh, Mitchell from San Francisco. Um, there were two different subcontractors that bid on the job that will be doing the boring and jacking under the <coughs> Um We also took the opportunity in the setup that we have um, to uh, provide an additional casing at only an incremental cost to the project so we can add an additional um, pipe crossing uh, to rehabilitate the uh, water crossing that the district has in that location in the future. Um, it's a uniquely high pressure area of the system running well over 200 PSI most of the time. And um, we discussed the, the challenge that it's taken for us to get this permission to, to actually install a new casing to take advantage of it in the stall two, since we're digging this big hole. And so that's a, 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 um, you know, added probably a, you know, about 10% to the project. And uh, we think it's a real big value added to the district. Um, they've came in, come in about, um, $150,000, $140,000 under our estimate, so we're happy about that. And uh, we've worked with this contractor before. Um, they have a history of working with the San Francisco airport. Um, they've built pump stations. Um, you know, like any contractor, as Scott mentioned, they can get, they can get stretched thin, so keeping, keeping them focused on a project is, is, is always important for, for it to go well. But I'm confident that they have a good deep excavation crew uh, we've seen deep ex excavations they have before, and I believe they, they will be able to successfully complete this project. Okay. Uh, Q&A from the board? And also, Clemens, if you have any additional comments. So how long will this take, and how disruptive will it be? Um, moderately disruptive, uh, particularly to the residents on 16th Street, um, but we are working in the dirt area a bit off to the side. So um, we'll have probably the most challenge with pedestrians walking between north and south and how we have the contractor adequately get those people around the work area on the east side of the highway. I think that's something we're going to really have to focus on with them. Um, on this phase and, and phase 1B, which, will, which we're preparing, we've already designed the pipeline that goes from four, 16th up to 14th. But due to the cost of the excavation and the timing on budgets, we opted to split the project. So if this is going well and the district favors an uh, acceleration of the second phase, we'll be able to bid within a month or so. We can bid phase 1B and continue on the pipeline up to 14th. Um, so and the, some of that work may have to happen at night on phase 1B. Um, here in the office, they'll be working over um, uh, coming up the Corporation Yard Road. So there's going to be a little bit of time where the SAM staff and the contractor are going to have to coordinate um, access to the pump station down here for their routine maintenance. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge for probably the first um, 
mm -hmm. week of the project, and then, well, depending on when they send up, the first week of pipe laying, they may choose to dig the excavation first. You know, we'll have to have a pre-construction meeting and get their schedule laid out, but there will be that disruption. We'll have to work with the SAM staff in order to get them adequate access and be able to get equipment in and out for the water, water crew here as well. Will there be any open trenching in the, in the roadway or? On the, pri on the Monteras private land yeah. here. And then there'll be uh, a, a large pit, probably 12 by 36 uh, on this side and probably 12 by 20 on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, roughly 20 feet deep. And so that'll have to be protected and plated. And there'll be some small open trenching and a manhole installed to connect to the existing sewers that are there and maybe some relocation of a storm drain that's conflicting with our excavation. Is there going to be any need for traffic control? They'll have a full traffic control uh, plan be submitted to Caltrans. We had to pre-plan pre what a traffic control might look like in the permit process. Mm -hmm. So Caltrans <coughs> is, is um, aware of that. There'll be probably a requirement to install K-rails around the work area so a car wouldn't crash into their work zone um, and disappear down there construction pit for example you know so Caltrans is concerned about that and and <coughs> has requested the contractors submit uh, uh, as a follow-up to our general proposal specific safety measures and signage and as needed flaggers to get trucks in and out of the area so there will be a slowdown um, occasionally but I think it'll be once the signs go up and there's a lot of orange construction signs people should slow down early. what level of uh, on-site oversight do we anticipate that we as an agency are going to have on the project? Um, something of this magnitude, um, we are going to recommend pretty, pretty strong oversight. Um, initially to set up the project, we're going to um, provide the construction staking and alignment based on our design as well as uh, working with the contractor foreman to see if there's um, any particular uh, comments they have about some of the concrete structures out there that we're going to have to dig through because there's a, being an old military base there's at least one building foot, footing out there we need to work around or go under or cut through so um, once it's staked within the next um, several weeks or a month um, we'll, we'll probably have fairly significant oversight and recommend um, also to uh, I'm probably I haven't even talked to this with Clemens yet but I think it will be good to have routine meetings and to keep one of the key uh, Montero staff involved. Um, so they have a clear understanding of what the contractor's expectations are, or our expectations of them in order to keep gates closed and general safety and get everything online and grade. Uh, we also are gonna have SRT participate in the water portion of it to make sure that the water pipe is properly pressure tested and, um, and capped off for future use. So, that's, so we're, we expect pretty heavy oversight for the first, you know, for a couple months. And just to be pretty blunt about it. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have, you worked, have you worked with this company before? We've actually completed about four pump stations with them in the last uh, four years. Um, you know, hiding no ups and downs uh, with the contractor, there have been. Uh, particular behaviors that we want to make sure that they were keeping a close eye on. General job site cleanliness um, is, is one. Um, I, I think this crew should be better at it than, this, than the more pipeline oriented crew because the deeper excavation crews have higher safety uh, awareness. Um, we also, uh, coming to the end of a project, similar to the, what Sam's experiencing on the pipeline there, contractors are really focused on pipelines, so gardening and irrigation pipes and general cleanup and sweeping and stormwater protection, you got to kind of remind them to do that. So we're going to have a pretty, it, fortunately we're coming out of the rainy season, which is good timing, but make sure they have their environmental, uh, uh, all their environmental stuff in, for any stockpiles they have here covered if it's any, any chance of rain and we're protecting the coastline and all that. So, so they'll, you know, they'll, that, that's the kind of stuff I'll have to get straight with them, make sure they're on their, stay on their schedule. Um, but the quality of work is, is always on par, so we don't, you know, we don't have any um, overall concerns with their experience. They're extremely experienced. Okay. Thank you. 
there will not, this is a parallel pipeline, so there will actually be no interruption in service. So we, we, we except for maybe one tie-in connection, uh, but that's it. Uh, there really shouldn't be any any sewer service uh, disruption for anybody in this project. Um, no, yeah, or or pumper trucks or pump around systems. This portion of the project won't need that. In the future, when we go to, uh, if we consider other repair I, um, alternatives on further north, like CIPP lining or or pipe bursting as possible alternatives to try to save some cost. Um, that sometimes that cost savings gets eaten up by the incredible bypass pumping that would be required for managing a, a significant pump station like Hanoff. So we need to look at that closely before we finalize the design on the, on the north end of the project in the and future. And we're years. using a 50 or 100 year pipe on this? Yeah, this is a, uh, the sewer pipe is being spec'd at um, 18 inch C900, which is water pipe grade, it's the best open cut pipe available in plastic that you can get. And it's the stuff that's about that it's thick. It's about an inch and a quarter thick, yeah. It's, it's a heavy duty pipe. We will all measure your fingers yeah. to see if that's that. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a it's I, a saw, I saw some <coughs> being driven down the highway the other day. Yeah. Going. It's, it's, oh. it's on par with the, the, the magnitude of pipe that was installed at SAM. Okay. Um, but it's, it'll be blue. It'll mm -hmm. look like water pipe. And then the water pipe we're putting in is going to be a self-restrained locking joint uh, ductile iron pipe capable of uh, 350 psi, so it's a pretty heavy-duty pipeline as well. And, and we're going to run a little strip down so we can find it. Okay. Yeah, and we can bring bring uh, wire locations up to the surface. And, Fabulous. And, uh, All right, this is resolution number so 1632. Moved. We have a motion to approve. Can I get a second, please? A second. All right. We'll that. This is a resolution in so many words except the bid as discussed today. It will not be in the depth of the, of the resolution. That will be in the minutes. Uh, I assume this is a roll call vote, correct? Yes. Or is the attorney's advice on how to do this kind of stuff? So can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Director Slater Carter? Aye. Director Boyd? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Harvey? Aye. Director Huber. All right. All right. It passes 5 to 0. Thank you so much. I was going to ask about the bike path, but I thought I would defer that for <laughs> offline discussions. Um, it's called Sunshine Valley Road. I know I read it. <laughs> that was my whole point. Okay. I think we're, we've decided to go back to old business, which means review and possible action concerning draft sewer rate study. Let me know. Yes. Um, thank you. I get back to that, you know, we now heard some two um, <coughs> items that are significantly impacting our sewer funds. <coughs> and uh, particularly the first item, uh, Sewer Authority Midcoast side, but also our own infrastructure needs are um, increasing significantly, uh, which results in the need for a rate increase. We had our last rate increase in um, what the last last sewer rate study was implemented in 2010. Uh, we thought we would we would look at a four-year span and increase the sewer rates over those four years. We were actually able to extend that over an eight-year period. So um, we made it basically four years without really a need to increase much um, or stretch the four years over an eight-year period is the better way to say this. Uh, we had uh, Alex Handless with Bartle Wells here at the last meeting and he provided us um, with a draft study uh, that the board received. Uh, the board provided now input um, and um, now Alex completed a uh, second study that uh, we can actually project here or the, the, the major tables. Uh, so I do have a recommendation. Um, mm -hmm. We have received the first draft, which you spent a fair amount of detail on. Mm -hmm. And if it's okay with the board, I would love you just to summarize the key changes you might have versus going through the entire document. Yes, you know, we actually had a presentation. That's the exact thing I said to Clemens. We don't, I don't think anyone wants to go over this. We have to there's background in case we need to for any reason. Our goal is just to cut to the chase. Yeah, um, there were some uh, updated financial projections that were a little bit different than before. 
Uh, let me just to summarize the differences. One is the level of CIP funding is a tiny bit higher. So the rate increases in this are a tiny bit higher. We had, last time if you recall, we made three versions of the cash flows. There was A, do a one-time rate spike, get it over with for a number of years. B, a phase-in that fully funds your capital program, which is, you know, eight plus million. It's about 1.8 million a year over five years. And your share of Sam's capital program and operating expenses. And we had a, a, a version C, which was kind of it would, if you really don't do everything, you know, take some steps in the right direction over the next five years. And there's a suggestion that, well, maybe a, a, a B plus version might be a good alternative to look at also. So we did include a B plus version in this one as well. So again, A is a, you know, kind of a big one-time rate spike. B is a phase in over the next, you know, five years. The board only wants to, you know, due to a number of future unknowns, uh, I think the board's direction was to go out with the Prop 218 for the first two years of rate increases to take those initial two steps and then come back again in a few years and reevaluate and uh, adjust course as necessary. Um, but the numbers are fairly similar to where they were before, just a slightly bit higher. We added in a, a B plus version. One thing I will add that I just saw this new SAM budget. We hadn't factored that. We had some prior draft numbers, but the numbers are very close. I think the totals have been like 50,000 of what had been incorporated into our uh, financial projections. So they're, they're very similar. So what, what are the decisions we have to make tonight? What level of, uh, kind of what scenario rate increases you want to move forward with with the Prop 218 process? So. The goal is to get out, there was a draft Prop 218 letter um, that has to be sent out to all the property owners who are the rate payers on the sewer side. And you know, in order to get your rates in place for July 1st, you're gonna have to get the Prop 218 notice out in the near future for the goal of having a public hearing at your first meeting in June, which is June 7th, I believe. Um, so we're just not sure what level of rate increases the board would like to include in that notice, and I'm happy to go into any more detail, answer any more questions uh, as needed to help you in whatever way to come up with a consensus decision. So, so, our so what we need, what we need from you tonight is ahead, choose the appropriate rate scenario. We recommend, of course, to look only at B and B plus. Could we go to and, which table that might be? And then also to direct us to send the um, Prop 218 notices to all Prop exactly. So which table are the scenarios? Do you remember off the top? Uh, we they're are. They're on the other agenda. No, I know, but I'm trying to find the answer to my question. It's on the agenda. Okay. 12, 12, 12. I got it. I got it. Never mind. That wasn't. You got it? Okay. Yeah, got it. okay. There's, there's B, and right behind it is B+. Yeah, plus. It's it. two pages. Okay, fair enough. So, um, and we can we say scenario B would be uh, a 26 percent rate increase 18 19 24 the following year 22 20. Um, a b plus would be slightly moderate and more moderate with a 20 percent rate increase in 18 19 18 percent the following year 18 percent 16 percent and then a fifth year with 15 percent but again the goal at this stage is only taking the first two years of rate increases um, adopting those at this time, understanding that there will very likely need to be additional uh, significant rate increases in future years. And in the big picture, you know, the more rate increases you adopt now, the less later, the less now, the more later. Uh, and there's no single right answer, it's just, we, we, the goal was to get you taking some big steps in the right direction, um, and reevaluate in a couple of years. Okay, more discussion. Yeah, we had we had this discussion in detail, <clears throat> and we kind of, I, I think the board uh, um, um, was going in the direction of uh, the uh, B plus uh, at this point. Um, am I correct, other board members? Oh, let's just uh, why don't we just look at it one more time and sure. get people's opinions on it during the show. Okay, that's that's twenty percent. You know, uh, then two thousand nineteen twenty eighteen. It's a stable, it's a stable increase over the years until 2023. 
23. Yeah, if I'm understanding, our, uh, we were really looking at for the announcement, it would be for just the first two years. That was the direction I thought we got from the board last time. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're all clear on the discussion. Okay, so the thinking, Jim, from what you heard with B plus, what's the consensus? That's, the, that's what I heard. Yeah, I, again, we need to refresh that discussion yeah. so that we're all in, so we can make sure. Sure, of course. Jim? Yeah, Alex, I'm going to go off topic for just a second here. Uh, you have a, a chart that says a single family residential monthly sewer bills 2017 18. Uh, which I think is uh, very interesting. What is the white dotted line represent? Uh, that's the minimum what charge. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And some agencies have a volumetric uh, charge, but subject to a minimum. It so is the called the single family residential monthly. Well, it's the rate survey. And it's on page six if you're using the, the PDF. Okay. okay. Mm. Good observation there. Um, yeah. But you know, it okay. added so, in so, so, yeah. so anything below that is the fixed rate. Yeah, so well, that so hurts the base rate. Yeah, like for example, here you have a 100% volumetric rate based on winter water use, but it's subject to a minimum charge based on you know four units per month. So I put in the, the white dotted line showing what the, the minimum charge is for the agencies that have those volumetric rates. So Jim, back to the basic question, which is your thoughts on this? Oh no, I, I I'm sorry, not Jim, sorry. Bill. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Um, I can sort of see a rationale for both B and B plus. Uh, I don't think any of us would want to do it. A, uh, and you know. It's just basically how much do we want to front load this, right? Exactly. <coughs> um, I'm going to go with the kinder and gentler <coughs> approach of B plus as opposed to the uh, um, <coughs> cattle prod approach of B. Since A is not on the table, but I, I think for um, people are going to be um, um, needing to once people are. I think it's easier for people to plan ahead um, a little bit. Hopefully, the economy will keep on going up. Scott, yeah, very similar. I mean, frankly, I. Like to be able to do more, but uh, a reasonable upper bound on what we can do in any given week. Okay, I I'll yield to the majority. I I'm not a huge believer of deferred maintenance, but um, I don't have a lot of energy behind it either. So I think I'm hearing at least three of you are in the are, are, of the idea of B plus. Um, uh, with that in mind. Um, and so prepare a motion, please. Well, let, let me make one comment, and that is that when we went, when, when we changed our water rate structure to um, let, depending more, to being more dependent on um, uh, uh, rate, our, our sewer funding and our uh, water funding through something that was in the control of the uh, Consumers, I was concerned that our um, income for both departments was going to be going down. People are very, very good at conserving when they need to, and um, so we're in this situation. I think it might be something that we want to look at in the future, as to going back to having more of our fixed costs covered by our meter charges um, for water. Not that we don't need to conserve water, but it's amazing the um, ability people have to reduce their usage. And um, I think that's part of our problem here, um, is that we didn't expect that people would be able to economize as much as they have with their water and it has it has hit us for a double whammy. So I think that's something 
we need to pay very close attention to in the future. Um, Has water use rebounded like everyone else in the state? Well, um, oh, we, we, we don't tend to use a lot of water anyway. We didn't see that much fluctuations th th even through the drought. Uh, well, actually, we, our customers have been conserving at, at least since what Catherine is, is pointing to when we went to a, which was really a 50-50 split between the, the base charges and the volumetric charges to 70% volumetric charges. Right. 30% fixed charges. Um, I, I think that's when we saw a drastic reduction, um, or in the following two years, we saw a drastic reduction. The, the drought didn't really influence us that much. So, so if you look at this chart that Bill referenced on the monthly sewer bills, um, you're going to see some interesting changes in the future because so many of these communities are dependent on Hetch Hetchy and they are facing um, extraordinarily large water charges coming up. So this is, it, it will make a difference for their sewer funding too. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up as something we need to pay attention to in the future to make sure we can, don't have to have these huge rate increases. Okay, back to the central question, which is B and B plus. Um, Bill, any thoughts on that? Because you and I are kind of on the other end, but not you, you know, it's, it's, um, I sort of uh, feel, I, I think, like you expressed the B more than the B plus, because it's far too easy to keep kicking the can down the road, and that means that somebody else ultimately pays for it. Um, I would prefer to be plus, but uh, um, I don't have that strong a feeling to that. Do you, you have any thoughts about, I mean, there's a, what was it, a five or six percent? Uh, it, just the marginal amount differential between B and B plus, especially in year one, because that's the big, the big kick, right? Is, is this, I mean, you both express, look, I, we're all on the same page. We, we want to get more infrastructure work done. Right. I mean, I think we're all agreed on that. Um, we're we're all attentive to rate shock, and not interested in doing anything to, to push too far on that. So some kind of balance to be struck. But I'm curious, as as you both spoke, um, the difference between the two percentages for B and B plus, the dollar amount. I don't think that's too good. I mean, what we've learned over the years is if you defer stuff down the road, yep. your actual total cost is going to be higher. And if you take the hit up front, your total cost is actually going to be lower. Yep. And my feeling is that the incremental cost between the two is not that much in the realm of life. And in the long range savings of doing it up front is actually, actually you're saving money by taking the hits up front. So, um, I think, Bill, I don't want to pretend to speak for you, but you just kind of watch the deferred method of it in the sand is another example where you defer things to a very end and explode mm -hmm. on it. Um, I would just like to start modeling that we start kind of paying them as we need to and, and absorb the upfront so we're in better shape. So. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going with B. I mean, I mean that, that's fine. I, you know, that's a good point is that uh, postponement uh, would save money, but, and, it, and you know, it isn't that big of a difference, and uh, it's more upfront. I wouldn't know what mine would be. If I can double back just to a second, uh, for a second, to the, the Sam comment. I, I completely agree that the things that Sam were deferred too long. Please keep in mind that your colleagues on the Sam board both here and at Granada have been pushing very hard for a number of years to deal with exactly the things that went wrong. Um, we know that stuff. Well, <laughs> not everyone watching on TV may know. And I, I just want I just want to remind everyone in the TV audience that um, this has been something where we've been painfully aware since 2009. Since 2009. 
and have been pushing and agitating and for the first few years because of Patton Bay and the, the beach group issue and the downturn in the economy, uh, we agreed to not press on them at a time when it was very difficult for them. And uh, when things got better, uh, they weren't coming along to help us you know, catch up on a bunch of deferred maintenance. And I think this is simply to uh, come alongside you and agree wholeheartedly the deferral is something that, that no one can afford. And this past year is just proof positive for why. Um, and I think it also points to, and <laughs> this is one of those things where uh, I'm sure staff enjoys hearing the one hand and doesn't enjoy the other hand. Because we always have finite money, it's really that important that that staff keep an eye on things, <coughs> know the condition of everything in the ground best we can, and then prioritize things so that we are really doing the things first that are most likely to go first. And I think the Clemens and the crew have done an ex and, and our engineers have done an exemplary job of, of staying on top of things uh, at the same time that we talk about what do we do 20 or 25 or it's, it, um, 26. <clears throat> Alex, maybe you could help me on this one a little bit. If we take the B versus B plus, that because we're uh, front loading this, uh, that means that uh, we do more projects without the potential for having to finance them. So therefore, there's a sort of a, a double benefit to um, to the fact that uh, we would have more <clears throat> cash on hand to be able to uh, do projects that and less of a chance of having to uh, finance anyone, especially if the projects started getting more expensive. Uh, do you have any feel for that? Yeah, I, my, my sense is I don't think you're going to need to finance any of these projects. Yeah. I mean, you're starting off with some you know, healthy fund reserves. You've just got a lot of capital needs out there, and the difference between B and B plus, or you could do anything in between there. They're all good steps in the right direction. B gets you a little further along. Uh, by the end of two years, you'll be generating about three hundred thousand more per year under B than in B plus. So that's just kind of building into the rates a little bit higher. Pays you go funding stream, meaning you know you'll have a need for less rate increases in future years, as I think you're pointing out. It's kind of a now or later game. The more now, the less later. And in none of these cases do I think, I, th I mean, even with B plus, you know, you're not really kicking the can down the road because these are substantial increases. You're, you're, you're addressing stuff, but just not as much as, as uh, with B. So I think it comes down to a balance of where, where you want to be at the end, of the end of the day. And I don't think you'll need to finance any of this. You're right, with B, you're a, a few hundred thousand, 300,000 per year better off than with B plus, but both of them are taking you two two big steps in the right direction and you'll reevaluate in two years. So I don't know if I'm big answering your question too vaguely, but no, that's I, yeah. actually is very good. Okay, so I think I'm here. My this. my oh, concern yeah. is um, <coughs> what it costs people to live here. I've talked to a number of people, um, for instance people who are um, who just go, we can't afford to, um, we can't afford to live here anymore. And it's it's getting tougher and tougher as the costs get put on to people. Um, I was talking to somebody who um, works for one of the supervisors in the county and he was telling me how well off everyone is when I went farm day. And I had this sort of gut level feeling that, eh, no. And then I realized he's only talking about the five or 10 houses that are sold every year. There's a whole lot of people who live here who are dependent on their savings and their social security. And I'm concerned about those folks. Um, and, and it will make a difference to them. Um, I, I just am not comfortable 
um, because I know so many retirees in town here who have told me, you know, they, they already rent out rooms in their houses. And um, so I, I cannot go for B. I, I understand the rationale. I am fully sympathetic to the logic. But I have to think about the people who pay the rates here. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I'll just put one editorial, and I think we're all thinking about the retirement folks, and so the question is, is, and again, this is, there's no right or wrong, so I want to make sure you hear this correctly. The question is, are we looking at the savings over time, or are we looking at savings initially? And this, that's a value judgment, and one can argue one way. What I'd like to recommend is someone put a motion on the table, and we could vote on it, and however the majority votes, we will so can someone offer a motion? Well, but before you do that, one of the options was to just uh, uh, have a, something in between B and B+. Plus. Well, that's, that certainly is another option. We could cut the difference, which would mean if we want to go something like that, to your point, we could do something like 23, 23 21, and the rest of it becomes immaterial because we're going to vote again in 2020, 2021, correct? correct? Yes. So we only have to worry about the first two years for what we're voting on, is that correct? Correct. Right. So maybe what you're suggesting, Jim, is the reasonable way to go, which is a compromise between the two. Catherine has been a little up front, but it recognizes the um, issue. I could, I, could, I could go with that because it's it, it, it works out um, I think with B2, what, about $150 a year per household? Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, we did have the uh, wind tax in here. figuring $300,000 a year divided by roughly 2,000 residences. You know, the difference, oh, you're right, it's about, um, between B and B plus, the difference is about, for a typical home, I'm going to say about $10 a month, $120 per year. So if we, so if we go in the middle, it's $60 between the two. And I think I'm hearing that word that will be a plot positive. I mean, is that something that we all can support? Cutting in the middle? Sure. Am I hearing yeah. that? Sure. Can we have sure. a motion to that effect? Okay. I'll, I'll make, make a motion um, for, 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 for 2018, 2019 to be 23, um, and then 2019, 2020 to be uh, 21%. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Probably should wait till the well, director comes back. We're not going to vote till he comes back. But he needs to hear the motion. He will. Yeah. I Good. Will. I'm. And, and, but we can discuss and this. this is, sure. Uh, I, I I would not try to vote on something that no. you have no idea he's voting. Of course not. <laughs> Maybe can I use this brief moment to make something. And so this is just for what's going in the Prop 218 mm -hmm. notice, and then it will come back to you on June 7th when you actually have to take action. When you do take action. You can't exceed what's in the Prop 218 notice, but you do have the authority to always implement something below it if you did want to drop back down to sure. the B plus or to anything else. Just, just to be clear. Okay. Let's go to work. All right, so we're going to wait for Bill for the vote. Um, I, I like to think that I would have known that without the attorney's advice, but you know, one never knows. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I could suggest that we could take like a five-minute break. Just take a five-minute break. Good idea. So we'll take a five-minute break, then we'll come back at five. Oh, wait. Is he coming back? Here he is. All right. <laughs> we'll get to five minutes. Right. Back All right, so Bill, what is on the, what the motion we're proposing? Uh, the attorney reminded me that your presence was valuable. Um, the bottom you will never live this down, please. Um, so the motion on the table is 23% year one, 21% year two. It splits the difference between B and B plus. Okay. And I think we all agree that maybe a compromise on both sides is a reasonable way to go. 23 and 21? 23 and 21. Okay. And I I think we need a motion, a formal motion to that effect. So well, I, I would agree. You made the motion. Do we have a second? I don't remember the second. That's what the attorney told me. Yeah, there, there, there's, there's no Sorry, there. attorney. <laughs> so we need a second, Stop. please. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. I don't believe this is a roll call, so can we have a, uh, let's have a, let's just 
This is essentially be the direction to staff when we bring back uh, okay. the documentation. Right, but the, but the uh, notice, Prop 282 notice, should be approved. All right, so is that two motions or one motion? You may combine them. Okay, so so how do I word the 218 motion? We're going with uh, B, scenario B plus. We're going between the two. It's a compromise between the two. All right. Um, then I would recommend a motion to approve uh, rate increases. 23 and 21 percent. 20, right. And also approve the Proposition 218 notice reflecting that uh, rate. Jim said you made the motion, is that okay? That's good. And Scott said you seconded that, that meet your approval. Agreed. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, oh, okay. we're in for some exciting stuff. I know I couldn't I couldn't avoid the teams here. We are going to review and possibly actually get started the mid-year budget review. So, uh, comments? Yeah, thank you. Um, so this this is now something that we've been uh, doing over the past three years, thanks to <coughs> Peter's efforts. We're looking um, every six months basically now at our budget how are we doing right now and um, so I'm gonna hand this over to Peter who's gonna walk us through really the um, ups and downs the highlights of our six months review Peter, yes, please. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> yes I'll thank you guys for um, for having me once again um, if we go over last month, we went over the fiscal year and audited budget versus actual. Um, as I told you guys at that point, the audit was a little bit delayed due to some actuarial um, that we had to have performed. So now, this they typically go go together, but at this point here, we are about two months after mid-year with the numbers shake out and uh, going back with staff and reclassifying some accounts, some expenses, some revenues. <coughs> And now we have pretty solid footing on where we stand mid midway through the fiscal year. Um, you guys have it in front of you. Um, we've been going with this format for the last number of evaluations, and I feel you. I feel it's the it displays what we're looking for in the best, um, easiest way to to digest the information. Um, going through this is Catherine's Catherine's. Um, recommendation to put a percentage variance it actually really does help um, for this for this exhibit just really say midway through the year I expect to see about 50% of the way there and on the sewer side revenue revenue portion of it we are for the most part a little uh, a little bit above 50% on most most revenue categories uh, which is very promising on the expenditure side operational um, there it kind of is all over the board, but um, the highest portion being the professional services for reasons uh, which you guys all know, um, none of them are related to legal costs. Outside of that, the engineering is up for uh, the, well, I have it here actually. Well, uh, this is still, so, to be reviewed, there are a number of costs from uh, Newt that I'm still not 100% certain aren't to be capitalized, um, but in any regard, they're, they're a bit high. Um, the one, one item I always look at is the personnel costs, and that is tracking very, relatively well on both water and sewer. Sewer is a bit high because of the staff turnover and a uh, when Judy left the, the district clerk, she had a large compensated absences balance, which was all paid out. Um, and then just transition that went through fiscal years. So that part is a bit high. Water is a bit low, same. Um, you know, really, I was really impressed with the overtime hours being extremely low, um, lower so than I've seen uh, since I've been here. So that's promising. Um, just a few years back, if you remember, they were they were really high. Um, and the. <coughs> The board talked about as far as okay it is not something that we want to have going long term just due to staff strain um so i said i'm very happy that that is where it is so positive there um once again going down a little further 
both capital improvement plan for both water and sewer are well below budget um, number, but due to just the water was planned, um, the, 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 the large project being the Alta Vista tank now um, feels like you know, it was close to, close to two years ago now um, that that was the, the lion's share of it was completed and put into service and that it was planned that that was the big project to save and, and use the SRF funds for it, um, but not a whole lot has been happening since then besides spot repairs here and there. Sewer, as you guys have discussed for many years now, um, has been a constant savings to work on the project that has now been approved. Um, positive as well. Connection fees wise, sewer has more than, we're almost there as far as what we projected at the beginning of the the fiscal year, 97% um, of the way there. So midway through the year, we are almost there in terms of connections. So I expect that line item to go much higher um, when it comes to fiscal year end. And then um, water side, actually, it's a little bit lower than what we had anticipated. But same um, in terms of the revenue side on the water enterprise side, um, halfway throughout the year we see 50% of the revenues being collected and on the expense side so this is you know really promising in terms of most are below 50% on all expenditure categories now um, see the the explanation for those are in the executive summary which you guys can refer back to so from that standpoint we are tracking very well this presentation leads us into really next month where we present our first draft of the budget. I will be working with Clemens, district staff, as well as finance committee in the next month, month and a half to really hammer out a solid first draft and then uh, tinker from there to my hope is, as in prior years, have it approved and either the first meeting of June or the second meeting of June. Um, we've never had to go into July, but if it has to go that because for various reasons, we have I see no problem with it as far as we won't start spending funds until July for that um, fiscal year 1819 budget. So um, with that, I could open up to questions. Q &A. Uh, questions from the board. Um, how many um, it, it says the water connection fees? Uh, two new construction connections sold and two PFP. So we haven't had a big run on water connection. No, we have not. We've seen in, in recent months actually some come in. So if you look at the consent agenda there. I, I looked at that tonight, okay. yeah. But I was wondering it, what it says here is that. Um, there have been two new, and I was wondering, are those the two we were talking about, or are we now up to a total of four? No, those are not the ones that are in the consent agenda. Okay, yet. so we're up to a total of four then. Yes. <clears throat> so this is as of uh, 1231. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. So I have another question. How can you have six new connections for sewer and only two for new for water? It really depends on how, when, what is paid. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, wouldn't you think with new construction you need both at some point? Absolutely. I mean, I'm just yes. thinking. Good thought. Yeah. Is it just a matter that you get the water at a different time you get the sewer? Yes. It's, it's, sometimes it's just some, some accounting differences. How this all lands in, in the system that Peter looks at. Yes. I won't ask any more questions. It just seems they would come in at the same time. But, um, Mostly we do, yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the board? So I'm assuming we're getting into budget season and the finance committee will be working hard. Um, of course. Yeah, well, it's hard, at least reasonably hard. Always. Always. <coughs> Anything, Clement, you want to? Yes, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a heads up on our budget uh, process, on, on, on a highlight actually of our upcoming budget. Uh, you've all witnessed um, that we actually have some staff uh, turnover right now. Um, you also heard that one of the 
the biggest stressors is the on call rotation. Uh, we've run this district since since or the water side since at least, I, I know at least since 30 years with three water operators. Um, we've now incorporated uh, the pillarage water system. Uh, we've uh, seen in those uh, decades significant increases in um, in actions that we have to take uh, regarding compliance, for example, simple sample taking. Um, we've implemented uh, since then uh, two new treatment plans. You will also be presented with a third treatment plan that we're suggesting very soon. Um, we've also heard from the sewer authority, Mikosa, that um, they they actually um, do not want to run one of their departments with only three members. So where I'm going to is we've we've bridged a lot of our um, needs with uh, temporary workers in the past. We've really hit a ceiling on that, so um, we will ask for a fourth operator position for this coming year. So this is something that we um, definitely need to do, so this is going to be an increase on the water side on personnel costs that we're going to see. And are you anticipating the less use of on-call with that fourth person? I don't see that the on-call really would change uh, to the addition. Are rotate it with four versus three? Yes. Okay. And so there would be less on-call? There would be less on-call. This is really also what we, what we hear from our operators. Um, with three, uh, you know, one is, uh, one is out, either on vacation or sick. It's really just two. Um, it's, it, it's a lot for, you know, People that start families, uh, so um, heavy burden. Yeah, no, I think you've got a reasonable request, and I'm assuming that's going to show up in the budget discussions. Hopefully. Okay. Yes. Good. Any other comments? But that's also a projection against overtime. Well, I mean, we're going to see the same amount of overtime, really, if we have three or four, because it's mostly just one operator responding mostly the on-call operators okay. or if an emergency it requires two or three it's going to be two or three regardless if we have four staff or something like but it will reduce our reliance on temporary it <coughs> is, yes so the reliance on temporary it's not going to be a, an as heavy impact financially because a lot of what what, what now a, a full-time staff does is covered through our on uh, our or temporary workers right now. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Clemens. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate your, your work here. And our fourth item is review and possible action concerning local agency formation, commission, special district member. Clemens. Yes. So the. Uh, Clemens, if I could interject, I talked to Martha today, and I also talked to Josh Cosby. So he wants. What this is, is sort of to inform, it, apparently there was some problem in the way it was worded, and so there was some confusion. Um, there, this is the Whatever. nominating committee for the LAFCO. Josh's term is up, and so they need to convene the nominating committee, and it will probably be done by email. So I, I communicated with Josh Cosgrove, and. Um, he wants to run again. Okay. And he has been um, an excellent representative for the special districts on LAFCO. We have supported him in the past. Absolutely. And um, so I told him, when I was communicating with him today, I said I would make it a point to say that we should support him again. I had misread it, misunderstood it, and I thought he had decided not to um, uh, resume or keep his his term at LAFCO, but he's experienced, um, he's very knowledgeable about special districts, and he um, um, is on the board of a small water district, so I think we um, do well to support So uh, I, I, I had no issues with that. The issue is that 
I don't think anyone knows what we're talking about. So if we could just talk oh, okay. briefly what, what we're talking about and then go back to what you are saying. So what we're really looking at is review and possible action concerning actually voting on a LAFCO member. Well, and I think, Catherine, your name was being submitted. I, 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 if yeah. I'm hearing you correctly, you were asking to have that submission pulled. To have that pulled. You, it was to have, you are the <coughs> person under LAFCO who gets to vote. Yes, I hear that. And uh, Martha said she feels it will be done. She has trouble getting all the presidents of all the 22 special districts in one room at one time. So she's under the new, under state law, she can do it by email. Okay. And the recommendation tonight is one more time, please. Um, that um, we support Josh Cosgrove. Okay. Is there any objections to that? Do we need a resolution to vote for that, or do we, is that and I, I'd recommend uh, either a motion or re uh, reflect consensus, but a uh, motion would be better. Okay, can we, uh, I <coughs> so, 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 Catherine, do you have an interest in being in that No, Josh, Josh does an excellent job, and um, he's, he's also uh, the president of the uh, San Mateo County Special District Association. Okay. So he's he's well supported by the special district. That's your recommendation. That's my recommendation. Yeah, I've never known Kathy to be Kathy to be shy about her desire. So, well, I just <coughs> so we've uh, I've, I've already sent the uh, authorization form uh, over to Martha that um, allows Dwight to vote by right. electronic mail. So I actually think. Uh, I actually think that the board simply could direct Dwight how to vote in this case. Right? With that uh, additional information, yes, that could be that, that would be appropriate as long as the record shows the approval of the party involved and uh, in the action involved. So. Okay, so I'll, I'll make the motion for Dwight to support Josh Cosgrove. And I'll second. This is actually something that we traditionally bring back once the elections are up, and this is this is not where we're at. So we're we're at the nomination process. Okay. So if you pull this back, Catherine, we we can bring this up when Joshua is um, nominated. Sure. And the and the vote is actually asked. That's what we usually do. Then we bring this item back up. Okay. So if you pull back, Catherine, I think the the only thing that is left to say is that we already authorized Dwight to yep. vote. We bring this back to the board once once will, the nom will, nomination is made. I will remove my motion then, and we can bring it back for a quick discussion. Okay, so I think okay. the minutes will show in so many words that Catherine has proposed has pulled her uh, interest in being nominated for the. Yep. Okay, fair enough. All, All right. right. Well, that was an interesting discussion. So um, our last item for new business is review and possible action concerning cancellation of the next regular meeting on April 19th. And then there was some concerns expressed because of not knowing where the next SAM meeting is going. So what's your thoughts on that? So um, the thoughts are as usual. Um, I think we don't have really an urgent item up for the 19th. If anything comes up, we'll let you know as soon as we uh, are aware of this. And uh, we can, of course, hold the April 19 meeting, but at this time, we don't see a reason for it. Okay, so let's do it this way. With the recommendation of the council meeting is always, and if something comes up, we can always have that meeting. Is there any objections to that? Um, I need to alert this group um, about the June meeting, uh, and perhaps think about maybe rescheduling that. I'm, in, I'm doing the AIDS ride, which is, um, Actually, I have to say, Bill and Kelly got me into this, and due to situations well yeah. beyond your control, I'm not. I would love to be able to. I do know you right, but here I am with my daughter doing the tan the bike. But I'll send you the 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 fundraising opportunities you all can undertake in this ride. But that happens that first week in June, so we have a couple choices. One, you can have it without me, which I would. Really I, I will not be here either. All right, so we got two of us. So my thought might be is, is should you consider maybe having it the last Thursday in May? Oh. May. Yes, that's, sir. Um, I'm just throwing out options, right? That's the 31st, actually, um, if I see this correctly. You got the finger up back there, yes, sir. I do, yeah. I just want to make the comment that that June 7th was going to be the date of the Prop 218 hearing. There's got to be a mailer that goes out at least 45 days. Well, we've got time to do but, that, and that's why we're having this. That's why I'm bringing it But if you do it in May, I think you don't have... Yeah, you do. It goes the other way. 
Do we have 45 days? Sure. Yeah, we do. We've yeah. Got, there's 30 oh, days May, in May. May 31st? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the very last, oh, so then the notice will just have to go out like within a week from now. Point. Yeah. Oh, yes, you okay. can now, get that date. You're okay. an engineer, right? <laughs> but no. we, <laughs> but we would have to. <laughs> One, two, three. But I mean, this is a, so May 31st, this is a point so well right. made. So That's we would have to revise yeah. the Prop 218 notice to reflect that the public hearing is on May 31st and not June 7th. My point. So we all have to be in agreement that that's why I'm bringing it. That we're changing this. And the fact that you have two of us gone on June 7th wouldn't go well for the public hearing anyway. So my question. Did you have a comment about that? That means you were going to say something. Uh, no, I, uh, well, I, it, since it falls on the 31st, it's, it's really close to the first week of June anyway, so, um, yeah. I think we're going to have the meeting on the 31st. Yes. We typically approve the budget in the June meeting at, would we have a second meeting in June, uh, to finalize everything? We can certainly have a second meeting It's a quick meeting turnaround for the budget. <coughs> yeah. It would be the third Thursday in third June, Thursday so June. it would be an option. Okay. Um, can, we, can, we, can we hold off on the third or the second meeting in June and just do one meeting for now until we get the chance to go home and look at our calendars? Those of us that are not. Yes. That are, I mean, uh, if the fact that, well, John, to your the, point. The, the, the 31st is fine okay. for now. So if, if you are unavailable on the third Thursday, then we should let. We'll talk about And then we'll go. We'll have to have the budget in the it, It's going to be difficult. The third is going to be difficult for me as well. The third Thursday in June. All right, so I think what we're saying is that we might have it on the 14th of June. Then is that something you could do with this? Well, we have to. Well, no, 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 Okay. okay. That sounds good. I think we're good. All right. I and you're gonna, and, and, and does our donation depend upon how many miles you ride in a day? Don't Your donation depends on the fact that I'm at your age. We're going 545 miles, and I expect the Hubris to contribute to the efforts that they got me into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guarantee I'll stand alongside the road and cheer you on. <laughs> You'll be there with Wayne. Throw a couple of water on. We'll be coming from Ontario. <laughs> yes, we'll be coming probably right down Highway 1. We started at the Cow Palace. I'll be in pretty good shape then because that's day one. When we did it, that, uh, we had a wedding the night before and we didn't get home till after midnight. But you were, start, you were but, I'm not doing that. Oh, well, we got to Santa Cruz. It was just, you know, I think both of us. Almost got inside wait, wait, the tent before we fell asleep. Wait, wait, you went from from San Francisco to Santa Cruz? Or yeah, that's the first day. We go from the Cow Palace to Santa Cruz. And the, the hardest day in terms of mileage is going from Santa Cruz to King City. Yeah, that's a hundred miles. Oh, that's hot. That's brutal. But no, it's not as hard because it's, it's flat. It's mainly flat. It's, it's mainly flat, and the wind is at your back, yeah, and yeah. Uh, unless there's a storm coming through, <laughs> and then you just yeah. No, the winds are normally coming from the north, pushing south. So that's so two days and seven. Yeah. Seven days. Five forty-five. Five hundred and forty-five miles. The, the hardest day is going out of Paso Robles. That's where the yeah. hills are. Yeah. Or and down the um, Cuesta Grade. No, you don't go down the Cuesta Grade, but you do go down the uh, uh, grade from uh, was it forty-six the top of the hill at, above Paso Robles, and it's twelve miles straight down to the coast. I got drum breaks, so that's yeah, you you'll need them. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. My daughter and I are doing a tandem ride together, and like I said, this is Bill and Kelly's responsibility. Are you, are you, are you the stoker? What? No, <laughs> my daughter's the stoker. Uh, we're, there's a couple things that we're doing there. One, we're getting along pretty well now, so we're hoping after day seven that relationship continues. And, uh, and the other thing about this thing is she's half my age, so her strength and endurance is being counted on as well. So. Just as a uh, side note, that I went on a, a tandem bicycle ride with a friend of mine, uh, Walter and Ari, not my sisters, uh, but I'm in the front, and he's in the back, and he's the navigator, and he's blind, and he was right on every single hill, wanted to shift everything. It was just absolutely amazing. amazing. Now, in normal circumstances, and saying that both are sighted, you trade places like you do with the, uh, like the Pelicans do, so that... Uh, break, break wind? Break wind. 
Yeah. So, so to speak. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> just had to go. Anyway, you'll be getting a little fundraiser yeah. and uh, you do whatever you want. Right. Okay, I think right. we are done we'll with this done comedy, comedy, and yeah. uh, I think we're also done with open session. So um, we will go into closed session, and so thank you so much. Are we going good. to have committee reports? Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. I got ahead of myself. You are absolutely you right. You got distracted. I did get distracted. <laughs> you were just hoping. I was hoping, actually. <laughs> so let's go to uh, committee reports, which has to start with um, this <laughs> Sam, which I, we've had a discussion already, but I'll let you take off, Scott and Catherine. I don't think I have anything more to add. I think I would just note that we got through the, uh, the budget discussion, the contract collections budget discussion. And even the business about the role in the lawsuit uh, was quite amicable. Managed to get through just fine. So that was uh, that's kind of a good thing to that is in progress. Yeah. All right. We'll end on that note, and we'll go to Mid Coast Council meetings. Well, the most recent big news <coughs> on Mid Coast Council is we are at the 10% design stage of the roundabout at Cypress Avenue and Highway One. If we have any sewer pipes that we need to deal with. We might want to um, be looking at that. The uh, staff report, the 121-page staff report, is on the Mid-Coast Community Council um, website. So you can, you can pull it up. You don't have to save all the paper. Um, they've done at 10%. This is, this is good news that the county has committed to doing a roundabout there instead of a stoplight. Um, on the other news came up and it's been the most discussed item on next door and I'm bringing it up for the folks who are not on next door. A fellow um, posted um, upcoming projects for the coast side. Um, there is apparently a Hyatt Hotel proposed for Half Moon Bay. Dunes Beach, the uh, Surf Beach RV Park. There is a hotel in Montero <coughs> for 31 units. Moss Beach has the Big Wave project, which is still pending. Mid Penn is doing the 71 units across um, uphill from the lighthouse here on C called One Sierra. Um, Granada has um, a three-story Mavericks apartment building going in with 12 units. Um, an RV park at Harbor Village for about 50 units. Um, Half Moon Bay has uh, Pacific Ridge is going in with 63 homes. The Best Western Motel with 46 rooms. The Hyatt Hotel will have 141 rooms and a conference center. Well, where will the Hyatt be again, Calvin? Across from the fire, fire right, district. Right, fire right where James Ford is. Right. Oh. Um, the Dune, let me see, the Dune Speech Hotel Surf may ha is zoned for up to 150 um, housing units and there is our proposals for more high density housing. Well, where is that going to be? Um, that's what Half Moon Bay wants to put in. Where? They, they're looking for sites. Oh, no. so, you're, 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 you're not talking about Surfer's Beach. No, Surf Beach. Surf Beach which is okay. further south. Um, but just to sort of give folks a heads up about what is is coming, um, just saying we should be looking at our connection fees. Um, and, and we also should be looking at, at um, because we can use those for the infrastructure, repair and improvement. The, uh, Project at uh, the RV project at uh, one in Capistrano, that is in the Granada Sanitary District. Yep. And CCWD. Yep. The, the concern I think we all need to have is there's going to be a lot of service workers that are going to be needed for these facilities, and there's no places for them to live. And so that will lead to the higher higher density units. So people just need to be aware of what's going on and um, stay informed, stay in touch with the Coast Community Council, and 
the city council and um, just don't be shy about voicing your opinion. Okay. CSTA report? Nothing to report. Dave, welcome back. I hope you feel a little better. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's nice to be back. I bet it is. It's nice to have you back. And was that the attorney's report? No report. Oh my goodness. Okay, director's report. Anybody? Um, I was reading in the um, little magazine, the Aqua News, something I was unaware of, and I think everybody should write to our local legislators about, email them. Apparently, our Governor Brown and um, a uh, what was it? A representative in um, Sacramento wanted to put a tax on drinking water, and it was going to start out as a low tax. But they want the districts who have good quality drinking water to tax their users and send it to the state to take care of the districts that have bad quality drinking water. Wow. Now, um, I think it's important for people, if, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be much, a few, few bucks a year or something, but we all know what the government does once it gets taxes. You know? So I think this is something to pay attention to. It would be an added cost to everyone's water because the district would then have to calculate the tax and send it off. And so um, I, I, the Aqua's proposal is that because this is bad water is really a social issue started created by bad planning on the part of planning agencies and um, bad practices. I know in this district we had a terrible problem with the um, MTBE getting into our water and it cut off our water supply and, and caused all kinds of problems for the folks who live here. That was a problem not created by either the farmer nor the water district, but it was created by the state and federal government for putting this hydrophilic poisonous substance in our water. Oh, and it also dissolved water tanks. So it went, then got into the groundwater. So I think it's important that social issues be funded through the state general fund and not through taxes on the water district. Thank you for bringing this up, Catherine. We were approached by Aqua this week with a request um, to join their efforts to oppose this. Um, so it didn't make it on this agenda, but um, we can either bring it up at the next meeting or the board could simply I, I think Agre that's agree to a managerial issue. I think that okay. we can I think certainly do a straw poll to see if anybody approves of taxing our water supply. Right. So I'm uh, sorry, that was a loaded question. I was going to say we we question. definitely would like to join uh, their um, you know, send an opposition letter for, and and uh, join I'm their happy. Efforts. I'm more than happy if they need somebody to go to speak um, to go to Sacramento and speak on this. I think that great. Mm -hmm. um, Water supply is something that is near and dear to the heart of every Montana and Las Beachian, and so we need to um, stay on top of this one. Okay. And Clement, uh, anything from you? Uh, no report, thank you. Okay, I would love to premature last time, but I think I'm on real now. Now we will leave open session and go to closed session.